our next session is a keynote speaker, and it is my absolute honor to introduce her. Birgit Leiden founded and is the chief mermaid of the Ocean Opportunity Laboratory, or also called TOOL, which is a global ecosystem for innovators within the ocean and renewable energy arena. And recently, she launched the world's first interactive map and resource match platform, connecting innovators across different startups and established industries focused on ocean and renewables. Leiden holds 17 years of experience in entrepreneurship and global leadership roles in maritime. And she has been the chair of several associations and foundations and has pioneered several change initiatives focused on ne next generation, diversity, and entrepreneurship throughout her entire career. In 2018, she also had the opportunity to inter interview President Barack Obama and has been awarded several national and international awards. And most notably, she has been several years on the top 100 ranking of influential female leaderships in global shipping. Birgit isn't with us physically present today, but she's joining us with, the, with technology. And I don't think there's a better use of technology than bringing um, everyone together. So over to Birgit. Thank you so much. And I have been looking so much forward to this week and spending these next couple of days with you. So I'm really, really sorry that I was not able to be physically among you today. But I do hope that I will still be able to share inspiration with all of you, uh, that we will have a great q and session after my presentation. And also, of course, find uh, great ways of interacting and bringing the biotech world in together with, with ours when we look at potentials uh, for the ocean industries. So I'm really looking forward to you today. And then to kick off my presentation, I thought I wanted to bring you back a couple of years, back to the autumn of 2019, when I started Tool, and when we had the skeleton uh, of what we have been building today in place. So I thought I will give you just a, a short intro video, um, giving you the insight of what is Tool and, and what was our purpose. And then I will draw you back into today and show you what we have spent lockdown, virtually collaborating across border internationally to develop. So uh, I'm gonna kick up our uh, short intro video first and then uh, see you back soon. So 
through many, many years, I've devoted my career uh, to connect generations and to connect people who have a passion for creating change. Uh, from my end, of course, with a focus on the ocean. So we, I wanted to start uh, today by our um, key focus area, which is about empowering generation cleanup and also how we approach uh, the need for designing for system change. So I will assume that a lot of you are not necessarily working directly with the oceans industries for today. So why should oceans be on your mind? Well, I think it's um, a key focus for us uh, that as we have a global population on the rise, uh, we will need more resources and we will need a lot of new, um, uh, new ingredients uh, for the biotechnology industries to nurture the world uh, and to really explore what will we be able to figure out from the deep oceans that we haven't yet um, explored already. So our oceans provides approximately 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. And then, of course, from, from our end, we very often look most at kind of food, energy, transportation. But talking with you guys today, I think uh, the potentials and the extremely huge uh, opportunities moving uh, forward to look at medicine and various ingredients are really of the essence. So we know that estimated growth across the ocean economies they are um, expected to double from 2010 till 2030. And approximately 2.5% of the world gross value um, is related to the ocean economy. And then the experts from OECD expect that this will outpace, or this growth will outpace that of the global economy in general in the next 15 years. And then we see a lot of the examples that what has happened when you have industrialized land-based um, areas. So we know that if we are going to grow ocean economies in a sustainable way, then we need massive innovation to avoid ecological collapse. So what we then realize is that small and established players need to work well together to find innovation matches and resources outside of their direct network and industry vertical to truly create this new way of thinking and more regenerative business models. So the challenge of our time, as we see it, is really about setting a new course where we need to build and develop completely emission-free and waste-free ocean industries, where we look at regenerative models, where we ensure not uh, tapping too much into resources in the ocean without making that we will all regenerate them for the future generations to come. We believe that changing for robust future success long term requires us to redesign systems and mindsets. And I think regardless of which industry we work in and have our everyday work, this is something that applies for all. So we consider ourselves a tool to enable this, where we actually re need to move from the structures that were developed for the industrial society into now picking apart the pieces and reconstructing them for the generations to come and for the state that the world is currently in. We look at ourselves as an engine for change makers that are currently being built. And you saw from the video that we had started uh, building a physical lab when we first started. And that was um, a means to truly connect people in a more physical interaction way uh, to get the early stage of what we wanted to create. Then as we, um, as we um, uh, faced lockdown, we decided uh, to break the kind of normal physical boundaries and the geographical boundaries. And we decided, we decided to fast track the long-term perspective of Tool, which was about building a technology-based global gateway ecosystem and a re real-time resource platform 
for innovators in our industries. And this is what I will uh, spend most of my time here sharing with you because I do think it can be a lot of uh, parallel interest um, looking at you as a new generation of change makers uh, and experts in the biotech area. And I would also say that I would have loved to see an initiative like the GAP Summit have been nurtured in the industry that I work uh, closest with. I think it's that's really where the huge potential is for connecting generations and uh, crossing the normal boundaries that we live in. So we focus on the innovators' pain points, as uh, and here as described by some of our partners. And uh, normally, an innovator needs to find a number of parallel resources within a very short time and using very little internal resources in terms of funding uh, and heads and hands. So uh, what we call this issue is the innovator's constraint. And it is a pain that is experienced by any actor who work with innovation, whether it's a startup, big corporate or a cluster. And then of course, we know that a lot of the big established players have some benefits when it comes to global reach and network and the access to a variety of resources, but we still do you see that one of the challenges in our world today is when you start moving outside of your normal industry sphere or also big established players interacting with the next generation and startups. So we have looked at some of these really basic needs when it comes to fueling innovation. Where can I find the right resources at the right time? Where is it that I can share available resources that I could uh, enable to benefit others? And how is that I can utilize my network to also indirectly or directly help others? We have explored key pain points and I have made a short video about this as well. worked with uh, more than 60 partners from the early stage across all corners of the world to explore what are the key generic pain points and how is it that we can turn those pain points and challenges into solutions. And now let's look at how is it that we can make our work scalable by implementing technology into the uh, recipe. So the tool spawn is, as it was mentioned here earlier, it's the first global map of innovators. And we are now in the first version uh, commercially live. That means that there's still a long way to go on um, developing its capabilities and uh, the smartness of the platform. So this is just in a very early stage. And we have chosen to do the past nine months as open innovation projects with our own customers and partners. So actually 
launching and opening up the platform for use while it's still in the very early stage of uh, capacities and while we are still developing. So we aimed to be able to unlock anyone's access to a world of change makers. We wanted to provide access to a curated gateway of innovators that are working on driving sustainable solutions. And then we have teamed up with established players and the small new actors to really map the unmapped world of innovators, as well as the ecosystem front runners that they need to drive their solutions into scalable and industrialized solutions. And where we had a key kind of core focus that we didn't want this to be a historical static information pool. We want this to function in a sort of a, uh, interactive Wikipedia meets Google Map meets Tinder, uh, an arena where you could offer and find the right resources at the right time. Um, we have targeted a quite broad group, but for a very clear reason. Um, here in Norway, we have used the cluster model for many years for driving innovation. And I think that's also quite uh, a well-established model in, in health tech and biotech. So we saw that in, in order to support the innovator, we needed to uh, get the entire cluster ecosystem in. So our ambition is really to connect the actors from across different industry clusters and groups, which then consist of startups and scale-ups, the established player of corporates, clusters, hubs, and accelerators, but also the NGOs and the R&D actors, education institutions, universities. So our aim is truly then to help turning key critical innovation challenges into scalable opportunities. Our platform is then aiming to pivot the cluster model, which is often handled quite manually still, so that we pivot it into a more digital space to enable the industry's group intelligence. And we saw with our partners that there were two specific key constraints that applied for any type of cluster and professional organization to support their ecosystems and innovators better. The first part was the, the regional industrial silos and ensure that we could better facilitate the current lack of efficient cluster interconnectivity. So fueling kind of the industry to industry collaboration or the cluster to cluster. And then there was the lack of real time at navigation that has been challenging for them, which is bringing us straight back to our focus, who has a need or a resource at a specific time. Then we have worked on, on some very basic, simple uh, premises uh, as when it comes to our methodology. Of course, we, we are focused on connecting enabler for change. So a few fundamentals from our end is that then we need to ensure that we bridge the generation gap to connect the new and savvy minds with those that possess years and years of experience and expertise so that they can lean on each other and, and enable this uh, setting where, where da David and Goliath uh, place each other better. Then of course, there is the cross segment and silo approach. Uh, we have been very focused on building this by and with and for other founders. Uh, we have been focused at facilitating borderless matchmaking. As we know that usually innovators have quite scarce resources when it comes to both time and financial resources in order to get out there uh, and find the resources, but also their opportunities. And then we have been very focused on creating change from the inside. And we often use the, the, uh, the illustration of an egg uh, to demonstrate the strength of change from the inside. We know that when we crack an egg from the outside, it means death. But where we crack an egg open from the inside, that actually means life. So that has been our model to help our own industries creating this really critical change, but from the inside. Um, we have also worked a lot with actors around the world to figure out how is it that we can actually 
copy uh, what happens in nature and, and explore the kind of biomimicry uh, concept of uh, collective intelligence. Because we know that our intelligence as human is limited, but when we bring the best brains together, such as you are doing uh, in Cambridge this week, then we can truly create huge changes and we can really crack open and solve big challenging issues. So we work a lot on the connection between humans and, and digital solutions. Um, and we really believe that the smartest minds in the future, it's not either human or artificial, it will be a combination of both. So um, tool is basically designed to help enable the clean transition across ocean and renewables through building this first global ecosystem and technical toolbox designed to fuel these industries group intelligence. Um, I'm, I worked with technology for many years and I've also worked with people for many years and I also really believe that technology is just our enabler and then it's about our uh, ability to utilize technology and collaborate through technology that will make the difference. So we have brought our partners and customers in from the prototyping start. So we will now explore tool a little bit from user perspective where we're today, uh, where we have built every step on smart inclusive models and open collaboration and innovation projects. That also means that everything we do in tool can and will be shared with anyone. And then people can choose whether they want to collaborate with us or take elements and, and concepts out and bring them back to their, their own initiatives. And they think that regardless of which direction they choose, our mission, which is to deliver and support change in our world is being fulfilled. So, we have taken the tech for good approach where the innovator is in the center and the innovator can be any one of you and us. Um, we have looked at the kind of very systemic generic types of interaction where an innovator interacts with other resources. So we had um, analyzed the big established players and the interaction back and forth where both parts represent both a resource and a solution provider to each other. We have looked at it from the top level, C-suite level, uh, technology experts and R&D, sustainability experts and NGOs. And we have spent a lot of time also focusing on the next generation of those who will come into these industries, connecting startups and corporates and their innovators with students, universities, and the R&D environments. And then we came up with this. So the tool spawn, lots of pun intended, is then built up as an interactive map and match making platform where the focus is on real business creation, but for the sustainable solution. This is how it looks today. So it's to work as a gateway to zero emission and SDG focused innovators, their needs and the ecosystem resources. So um, what we have nerded on during this platform development is to figure out how we can help projects that are seeking innovation partners, individual innovators who seek a variety of resources, corporate and cluster initiatives that are seeking startups and talents, and unresolved industry problems for students and startups to tackle. We've also looked at how we can facilitate interaction Action across regions and segments. So per today, we have the opportunity to enable people to post their needs or resources to find their right match right now. Today, we have, uh, well, nine months into our um, public life. We have now uh, onboarded just over a thousand users from 65 countries through this first pilot uh, period. And we have more than 130 uh, industry partners across 40 countries. And then we have mapped uh, a bit more than 2,000 companies, predominantly startups, but now also getting in universities, R&D environments, clusters, etc. So um, where we aim to go moving forward now 
and which we hope you want to be part of the journey to do, is to create this first global interactive map of innovators, where you can browse each other and also advertise needs and resources. And we have also set it up so that it can be a self-service function for other change makers uh, to create uh, their initiatives, or it can be curated. Currently, we have a number of projects up. We just did a bio-related uh, project for the World, uh, World Ocean Council and international partners, where we have looked at uh, uh, limiting the, uh, the spread of invasive species. And we will now have a huge opportunity space for actors that need biomass for their solutions. As we see that we now have innovators that collect biomass from infrastructure in the ocean, which can be used as resources for others. Uh, we also work mobilizing various initiatives that our partner address. So here we have an example from a zero emission ship technology association, where we are helping them to map the world of zero emission solutions for shipping towards COP27 in Egypt in November. Then we have created uh, and curated with partners featured insights list, where we take in a number of categories of startups, resources, et cetera, based on what we're working with. And here we have worked now on innovators battling biofouling, innovators in environmental boating, um, and, a, and a number of other uh, areas. And now one of the huge opportunities and focus areas for us moving ahead is identifying and mapping innovators within biotech that are related to the ocean space. So this is an, a really exciting initiative that we hope to share and connect them on board uh, you guys into. Um, here's an example of one of the current projects that we have done uh, and are currently delivering on towards November. Here we have done a first mapping of female entrepreneurs within ocean and energy. And here you can see a screenshot of what type of information that you can find about these innovators. And the key here is of course, that it will be easier for all of the small innovators to become visible. And it will also be much easier for the big stakeholders that are searching for some specific type of startups or innovators to find this through us. Uh, we also have here the front runners. So here you have, uh, global leaders, investors, owners, entrepreneurs, experts from all over the world that aims to help drive innovation and that aims to either develop their own innovations or support the change makers. And then, oh, for some reason, my life, <laughs> there is one picture missing here. Here you can also find the first uh, overview of what happens when we search for biotech. So now, as we can see on the tool spawn, um, we have 17 results in biotech on the spawn. We have done a couple of matchmaking processes already, but this is clearly showing the gap uh, of this space per today. So we are here to empower generation cleanup. Our mission is really to take the power of young climate activists and help them find their space into co-creating our future as business activists. And we believe that you guys who are gathered in Cambridge this week are truly uh, among this group. I also wanted to just show you before I round off and open up for Q&A, uh, another current project that we're working on, which is based on needs that are part during the early stage. So uh, to the left, you can see our uh, global female candidate pool, where we're now uh, recruiting female candidates for board and management positions that are looking for contributing, as we have a huge uh, need seen from the industry side in getting more females into the senior levels. On the other side, we also are launching our young global talent pool towards a global talent week, uh, end of November, where we aim to connect uh, global talents from around the world with the leading innovative companies across our sectors, spanning from startups to big established corporations. So we are here to serve and help anyone who really wants to bring a different to their industries. And I believe that 
Individually, we are one drop. Together, we are an ocean. And I think this is really the best way of illustrating SDG 17 collaboration for the goals in an optimal way. So um, I think that we are definitely now open for questions. So I hope that you have some uh, insights. And if you want to connect further with us and with me, then you can go and check us out on toolspawn.com. So I will now stop my screen share so that I can see all of you. Does anyone have a question to ask Birgit? Hi, hello. Um, I know uh, the, the Ocean Cleanup Organization that is based in the Netherlands by Bojan Slat is one of the biggest uh, initiatives in cleaning the, the ocean. Do you work with, uh, with them or, or what do you do? And uh, my second little question, how big do you have to be uh, to be in the platform? For example, in Mexico, maybe there is a, uh, a, like five or six people that are trying to clean up the beaches. So uh, how big do you have to be to, to be in tool, to use it? Um, how, how, how does it work for, for people so small? Yeah, well, we are built for the grassroots or the sea grassroots. So um, we have actually done quite a bit of uh, project focus on how we can contribute to uh, both early stage commercial startups, but also uh, students that are still in their educational path uh, and looking at how to connect their typical student startups or concepts with the industries. Uh, so, so from our side, we are built for the small actors, but of course, in order to drive value for the small actors, we need to have the big players in. But I think the big difference between us and a lot of the global initiatives is that usually you start with the big powerful actors, and then of course, they will be the ones who are heard. I believe that we need to support the, the younger, the next generation, and then lifting them into uh, the right ecosystems. And then when it comes to Boyan, uh, we, I, I, I developed the first Ocean Entrepreneur Award back in 2011, and Boyan was our second winner. So I, I was so, uh, um, uh, I think, thrilled to, to hand out a global award to him just before they actually broke through uh, back in 2015. So uh, we did a global mapping uh, this winter and uh, spring, which was focused on innovators that are uh, in, in one or several of the areas of um, handling uh, ocean plastics, uh, replacing ocean plastic with uh, biomass from the ocean, or in other ways, tackling uh, the plastic pollution issues that we are facing. Hi, Bridget. My name is Brian. I'm from the University of Tokyo. And very wonderful talk. You have just showed that the human mind is a vast and infinite ocean of ideas. And touching upon ideas, I would like to take upon the issue about the biotech sector, which you have projected a while ago. You have 17 projects. And my, idea, my question is, has Tool chartered the waters on bioprospecting? The idea of biomapping species for their therapeutic uh, small molecules being produced by these organisms. As we all know, the ocean is a, a harsh environment and all organisms need to produce specific molecules in order to survive. And one of the most classic example of blockbuster compound from the marine environment is ziconotide or prealt, which is 1,000 times more powerful than morphine. So do you think like uh, merging for bioprospecting startups would be a good idea and uh, an avenue for tools to expand for the future? For sure. So we haven't looked into that specifically yet, but I am, uh, since this summer, I'm on the board of a biotech company that takes out ingredients uh, for cosmetics using waste liquid from uh, salmon hatch fluids. And I do think there are enormous potentials in this field uh, moving forward. So this is, and this was actually what I wanted to 
addressed to to you guys today was how is it and with which partners who of you would like to get on board and partner up for that type of dedicated initiative from our side because that's usually our progress is really finding out who are the stakeholders and partners that would really want to map a specific area or focus field and then we can do that so we built a structure for it but we usually always do that as a collaborative effort with partners so we're very much open for that and yeah there are huge opportunities moving forward Hi, thank you so much for your uh, for your presentation. It was very interesting. Um, so this is Warda, and I'm uh, uh, electrical and electronic engineering from the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering in Algeria, and I'm um, a data scientist. I work as an, a data scientist. So back to my university um, uh, year last year, like I had this project of creating. Um, a robot that uses um, artificial intelligence to actually like um, image processing to actually um, detect the plastic wastes um, in oceans and to actually go uh, and provide this robot with this information to collect to collect this um, plastic waste. And so my question is, do you actually support this kind of project? to go into production because like um, in Algeria, for example, um, we don't necessarily have this um, like um, the necessary um, hardware, let's say, to actually implement this kind of project. And the thing is like even if I do the prototype uh, with my own hardware and uh, tools that I can that I can ship, um, the thing is, like, we don't have also the technology, the nanotechnology to actually implement this project. So my question is, do you actually support this kind of project and provide follow-ups to actually um, put this project into production and like have the final product that can be used? Yeah, so it's key to understand we are not like an accelerator incubator. So we don't do the actual, you know, the development part, but we can open the doors and help scouting and finding the typical kind of resource partners that are needed. Uh, and this winter, uh, related to the, the plastic project that we had with WWF and uh, Grig Foundation, what we did was we, we actually did a kind of a related project focused on the Philippines, where there was a project that had um, fun partner and an environmental NGO and they were looking into then a three-year project to identify how they could uh, reduce uh, plastic waste in Philippine imports by 50% over the next years and then they did a mapping of like the waste streams and who were on the ground of local partners and then we identified what type of actors or what what type of functions are missing from this local ecosystem and then we did a, a competition and a global mapping of actors that could fit the missing holes in those uh, in the value chain. And among the participants were uh, like the Plastic Bank that I know has been uh, presenting and like leading up to this conference uh, and a variety of other actors. So I would say um, if you have a solution or a concept that you are developing in your market, I think our best contribution would be to help connect you with the right type of industry players on the ground in Algeria that are interested in this field. And on, then also potentially connecting with various international stakeholders that may have been through this process before in other locations. Thank you very much for your answer. We can take one more question. Um, hi, I really enjoyed your talk. Um, so I'm Mariah and I'm a PhD student here in Cambridge, but um, I was born and raised in Fiji, so I found it really interesting, um, your discussion of the oceans. And I noticed in your map that you have a few um, sort of hubs around the Pacific, um, 
But one of the real problems in the Pacific is access to a stable internet connection. Um, mm. And like our lives are very heavily influenced by the ocean and um, it'd be a really great opportunity actually to have more of these things in the Pacific. So I was kind of curious to ask you about if this is purely an online platform, or if you do go to member countries and also how would you maybe make this maybe more accessible to those who do not have as much technical technological access or as rival technical technological access and I was just really curious to hear if you had any um, active projects in the Pacific so yeah those are mm. that's kind of the theme of what I want to ask. No, I think what we've seen is of course that small island states are most affected by climate change and also we see that there are some very big hurdles and barriers when it comes to being an innovator in a smaller rural uh, community because you are maybe not that naturally exposed and present in those kind of arenas where you can meet the big players that you need to, to do. Uh, so we don't have any active projects on that, but we have, uh, we have a number of partners worldwide. So for us, it's basically kind of a priority when it comes to you know, people approaching us with a certain type of either industry area or a geographical area that they want us to to get started on, on mapping and that is very open and of course one of the really big uh, ambitions with tool it's, is to be able to help democratizing anyone's access and, and potential to drive change and become an innovator and and, uh, and build startups that can scale uh, moving forward okay and that brings us to the end of this uh, keynote session uh, we'll give a round of applause to Birgit Leiden. And I would, yeah, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there physically, but please feel free to connect with me, um, well, there <laughs> on Spawn. Uh, if you have any other, you know, questions moving forward or in otherwise would like to, you know, get on board and, and work on this change project with us. I'm so glad we could work it out that she was here today and thank you so much.